Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you the solution to the 2021 anti-10A number 21. Basically, let A, B, C, D, E, F be an equiangular hexagon. Remember, equiangular does not necessarily mean equilateral. The angles are equal, does not necessarily imply the sides are equal. So I'm going to try to draw in a somewhat obscured, obscured hexagon here that does not look like all the sides are equal. So you know that it's not all the sides are equal. So maybe something like this. So you can clearly see that all the side lengths are not equal in this in this hexagon. So in this hexagon, A, B, C, D, F, A, B, C, D, E, F. So now we've drawn our diagram. Great. Basically, what we're saying, saying is that we're extending all these lines. So what we're doing is we're extending line A, B. We're extending line E, F. We're extending line CD. And we're forming this triangle with area 192 root 3. So basically, and then we're also extending the AF, BC, and DE to form another triangle. So let's say that we extend this line here. Extend this line here. We extend this line here, this line here, and then we form another triangle that also has area, we're given the area of. So basically what we have to do in this problem is that we're given these areas, we know it's equiangular. So let's first try to deal with that equiangular condition. If all the angles are equal, what must be? They must be. Remember the sum of the angles in a, in a hexagon is four times, six minus two times 180, which is 720 degrees. And there's six angles and all are equal. So we divide by six to get 120. So it'll be 120, 120, 120. Okay, so now what do we know? Well, the key thing is, even though this diagram may look a bit obscured, we can look for supplementary angles, angle chasing. Because we're given angles, let's try to use that condition somehow. So most of the time, Every piece of information has some use, so we should always be on the lookout for that. 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60. So these are all 60 degrees. All. The reason that they're all three angles are 60 degrees is because this angle, these are going to be supplementary, so they're going to be sum to 180. And then now we also know the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So if two angles are 60 degrees, the third also has to be 60 degrees. So then we know that each of these angles is also 60 degrees. So from here, what can we do? So from here, now we know that since all these angles take me, the blue triangle and the green triangle are equal angle, equi equilateral triangles, even though it may not seem like it in my diagram. These are going to be equi equilateral triangles. And even the smaller ones, the smaller ones are also going to be equilateral true because they all also have angles of 60 degrees. So now from here, we can see that the, eight, the, the red, the blue triangle, has an area equal to 192 root 3. And since it's an equilateral triangle, that means that two root 3 by 4 times side squared is equal to 192 root 3. We cancel root 3, and we get that s squared is just going to be equal to 4 times 192. And we can actually see that 4 times 192 is just equal to 16 times 12, just by a little bit of factoring. And from here, or let's just say 64 times 3, because now that we know 64 times 3, now, by taking the square root of both sides, we get that s is equal to 2 times 8 times the square root of 3, which is 16 root 3. So the blue triangle has side length of 16 root 3. Now, what about the green triangle? The green triangle, let's say, has area of 324 root 3. This means that root 3 by 4, s squared, will be equal to 324 root 3, or that s squared will be equal to 4 times 324, meaning s equals to 2 times 18, or 36. So the green triangle has side length 36. And we have that the blue triangle has side length of 16 root 3. So from here, what do we know? We want to find the primitive hexagon. So let's just label all the side lengths to be, let's say, a, b, c, d, e, and f, right? And since we know that all these small triangles are equilateral, we know this is F, F. We know that this will be A, A, 
We know this will be B, of course. We know this is going to be C, C. This is going to be E, E. So now we've labeled everything in our diagram. We've extracted all the information. What do we know? Equilateral triangles, they have the same side length, right? So we really, what we really just want to find A plus C plus C plus D plus F. So common strategy in problems is not only to look at what the information you have, but also look for what you're trying to find. Because sometimes you may not necessarily have to solve for A, B, C, D, and E, like in this problem. So A plus B plus C plus C plus C plus F. We know the side lengths of the green and blue triangles. Can we use that somehow? Well, notice that the blue triangle side length is simply equal to, is simply equal to C, D plus E plus F. So the blue triangle side lengths, so 16 root 3, simply equal to D plus E plus F. The green triangle side length is simply equal to A plus E plus C, which is 36, right? So we know the value of A plus E plus C. We know the value of D plus E plus F. Can you find the value of A plus E plus C plus D plus F, E plus F? Yes, by just adding them all up. We add 36 plus 16 root 3, because 36 is A plus E plus, A plus C plus C, and 16 root 3 is D plus E plus F. And we get that it's equal to 36 plus 16 root 3. Okay, so now we know the value of A plus B, A, some values from A through F, which means that since it's of the form M plus N root P, the answer is just going to be 36 plus 16 plus 3, which is 55. So basically, the key ideas in this problem was to first notice that the equiangular problem condition gives a lot of properties about the angles, which led us to think of angle chasing, which gives us supplementary angles, and that tells us really cool properties of that. The angles are 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. So from there, well, what we could try doing is that we try to notice that, try to use the condition of the areas, and we see that, oh, 60, 60, 60, equilateral triangle. We find the blue side length, the green side length, and now we think how to use that. And then we think of the strategy of looking at what we have to actually find. So sometimes in algebra problems, they might ask you to get, they might give you some equations, ask you to find some expression. So we can use a similar technique if rather than directly solving for the variables, we instead try to find the expression in terms of the variables. So not directly solving for what individual variables, but what the problem is. So in this case, we did something similar. Instead of solving for each of the individual variables, which would be way more time consuming, I'm not even sure if it's actually possible. We just see that, ah, to find a plus c plus c plus c plus f, e plus f, we see that we can just find the value of a plus c plus c, which is the triangle side length, and d plus e plus e, d plus e plus f, which is the, of the triangle side length, which gives us a total sum of 55. Thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like this video and also subscribe to the channel for more interesting competition math preparation videos. Bye.